right, this is the entrance. And Pueblo Grande is a National Historical Landmark. So I'm going to walk in. The museum's closed because of COVID, but the trails to the side is actually still open. So I'm going to go check. Oh, there it is, right in front of us. Uh, according to some signage, this was a this mound and these associated structures were part of a large village that was here 900 years ago by the uh, archaeologist called Hohokam people. So this is uh, what's left. I'm sure there's lots of artifacts around here. This is a protected site, like I said, National Historical Landmark, and it's it's a I believe it's city owned, and so they've done a great job of having a lot of interpretation, outdoor interpretation. I'm sure the museum's got some amazing stuff in it too, but like I said, they're not open right now. So, um, but really what's, what's really amazing is to see these, these standing remains of this village, just, just right here, still here. This is the remnants of the Pueblo uh, Grande uh, mound. And so they would have had structures on top and you can still see the river stones that they used to actually build part of this, this wall to this structure. And there would have been buildings on the top. So we're gonna go check that out too. Visitors to this ancestral place pass through a world of souls and spirits. Historically, the O'odham placed a pile of stones on the top of this va'aki, or platform mound. The shrine acknowledged the spiritual power of the Sivan, the spiritual leader or leaders who once lived here. That's really interesting because in the southeast, the native people who lived in the southeastern, what's now the southeastern United States, also build platform mounds where they oftentimes put buildings on the top where their leaders, spiritual leaders or chiefs would also live. So that's an interesting cultural similarity between these two very different cultural groups between the southwestern people as well as the southeastern people of the, what's now North America. So now I'm walking up to the top of this platform mound. See what's up here? There's signage that says, you know, stay on the path. So I'm sure there's artifacts scattered around here, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to venture off this path. We're going to stay on this path and check out some of the, wow, look at these remains just right here, right there. It says in 1901, Dr. Joshua Miller, president of the Arizona Antiquarians Association, conducted the first reported excavation of Pueblo Grande platform mound. So I guess this is called Miller's room. This is one of the first rooms that this gentleman, uh, and this guy, I'm not sure what he was a doctor of, but this is before archeology span was really a, a profession um, at using modern scientific methods. In this room at the Southeast corner of the mound, has architecture that is especially interesting built on the remains of previous structures. The room was one of the highest points in the mound. Just a corner doorway was built in this room, which faces northeast. Another doorway was put in the middle of the south wall. At sunrise on the song, summer solstice and sunset on winter solstice, a curious alignment occurs. During these two days, a shift in the light stretches from one doorway to the other, signaling the midpoints of the solar annual cycle. Artifacts discovered in these two rooms hint that the rooms were put to some special use. In front of the room were found carved shell and wood. I wonder where this shell came from. So a lot of the times when um, archaeologists can't quite explain what a particular space or artifact was used for, they, they'll say it was ceremonial, which, you know, certainly it could have been ceremonial or religious, and sometimes it's really hard to interpret. But a lot of times it just means we don't really know what people used it for it's just the best guess based on the location it was found and any associated artifacts nearby so that's why it's really important that artifacts are left in place um, because it helps with interpretation when you have enough artifacts together as they were originally deposited that can really help us explain and interpret in a much more accurate way what what particular objects or, or spaces were used for another important point is the native people who still live in this area oftentimes know exactly what these things were used for because they use them in some cases for the exact same types of ceremonies today. So that's really important, you know, make sure that archaeologists and just in general, we uh, listen to the indigenous voices that are still here. You know, obviously these people have, this, you know, these are the t people living today are descendants of the, of the native people who built this structure and lived here over 2000 years ago. Park. It says this trail is stabilized natural surface that connects the Grand uh, Canalscape to a paved walkway. Oh wow, here's a canal, look at this. Archaeological park. Okay, so this actually goes over the, the Hohokam um, settlement, it was right here. It makes sense, this was right where they would have put their irrigation canal. 
More pottery all down here. Right there, right there, right there. This is a pretty substantially large piece of pottery here. Yeah, it's amazing. Found it right here. That's, but uh, wow, unbelievable. We're gonna put it right back and we're walking, walking away. Cool. Remember, leave artifacts in place. It's okay to take a picture, but uh, don't take them away. They don't uh, belong to us.